Hi, my name is Dr. Mike Evans, and this video is about preparing you in the best possible way for your hip or knee replacement surgery. Discussing ways to increase your chances of a great outcome, but I think also anticipating common problems. My hope is that this can add to the conversation that you are already having with your care team. Bill Walton, the professional basketball player, once said that minor surgery is surgery that happens to somebody else, and I agree. It's all major surgery when it's surgery on us, and, and certainly replacing a knee or a hip is major surgery. I'll start with a philosophical point. Yes, the surgery and, and the team that looks after you, the, the surgeon, the rehab team, and so on, are all critical to your success, for sure. But I think if you ask them, they will say you are just as important to your outcome. There's no lever that we can pull that increases your strength before surgery, nor is there a motor that activates your new joint. You are the lever, and, and I think you are the motor. Successful joint replacement is not a passive process, it's a shared partnership. In my mind, there are five key things you need to know about hip and knee replacement. So number one is that the stronger your muscles are around the joint, and the fitter you are in general in advance of the surgery, the better you'll do. I recognize this is a mixed message, as the whole point of surgery is to relieve your pain, which limits you from activity and strengthening in the first place. But if you can develop a routine on your own, with your physio or your trainer, that builds up your muscles, improves your flexibility and exercise tolerance, the better outcome you'll have with your new joint. I suppose it's kind of like when we set a date in a few months for a 10K run or a big hike. Some days we need to push ourselves and it's hard work. Other days it's easier and feels good, but in the end all that hard work is rewarded. And there are long-term rewards. For example, with hip replacement, one older review showed that preoperatively only 2% of patients performed regular walking, and this increased to 55% postoperatively. Cycling increased from 7 to 29%, and swimming from 13 to 30%. So big improvements are possible, but not everybody cashes in on them. A recent Dutch trial following activity behaviors after knee replacements found that patients didn't walk or bicycle to work as much as their peers and hypothesized that patients had stopped pre-surgery because of arthritis pain and then had continued their inactivity with their new joint. The message is we don't want you to use your new joint to stay the same. We actually want you to increase your activity. Check out our whiteboard video on the science of activity by searching for 23 and a half hours on YouTube for more. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Evans and welcome to this visual lecture I'm calling 23 and a half hours. Number two is about managing expectations. The average person going for hip and knee replacement in Ontario is in and out of the hospital and heading home in four days. If things go smoothly, many are out even earlier and most of you will be back to walking with assistance the day after surgery. You see, when you have surgery, you stop moving and, and we humans were meant to move. Motion is lotion. Although it might not feel like that the day after your surgery, moving will be painful. But the rehab and nursing teams are not doing this to torture you. They're doing it because the outcomes are better. Not just for your joint, but also for the rest of your body. Less blood clots, less pneumonia, more independence, and perhaps most importantly, at least to my patients, predictable bowel movement. Most of you will receive blood thinners as a pill or an injection to reduce the chance of blood clot to less than 1%. So follow the directions on your prescription. If you have sudden shortness of breath, chest pain or pressure, or a significant increase in pain, swelling or redness in your calf muscle, make sure you alert your caregiver or go to the local emergency room. Also, make sure you tell your other medical specialists that you are going for joint replacement. Number three is a new normal. Let's start with pain. Your team will choose a variety of pain control methods, beginning with anesthesia and nerve blocks, and then medication taken by mouth or IV, as well as simple techniques such as ice, rest, and elevation to keep you comfortable. It's likely you require pain medications for about six to 12 weeks post-op. I think it's fair to say most people don't want to take pills for pain, so it might be helpful to reframe your approach as designing a regimen that keeps you at the minimum dose, that allows you to be active and in good spirits, but is, is not too much that you're feeling major side effects. Your pharmacist can be incredibly helpful here. If pain suddenly gets a lot worse, talk to your care provider, as it may be issues that need to be treated. Swelling can persist for several months after surgery. To manage the swelling, it's important to elevate the leg and avoid sitting or standing in one place for long periods of time. Some people also experience bruising after surgery. This is normal and will disappear with time. In terms of your incision, you can expect some redness, but it should not be expanding. Your sleep cycle may be off because of pain or the need to shift at night, and, and your sleep may come in chunks. If you're waking up at a predictable time at night because of pain, talk to your doctor or pharmacist to see if you can adjust your medications to get ahead of the pain. Feeling down. Now, I think having a joint replacement is a major life event and involves some hardship for sure. So 
I think feeling blue at times is normal, but feeling sustained depression is certainly not. So talk to your care team or, or your family doctor if you feel overwhelmed. Finally, you will be taught certain exercises in the hospital, and it is crucial that you do these. Most of these you can do on your own. After knee replacement, it is imperative that you work hard on getting your knee range of motion quickly. Most people require the help of a physiotherapist in a clinic setting for a short period of time. After a hip replacement, your surgeon or, or care team may outline a few movements that they do not want you to do. Rapid recovery typically occurs in the first three to four months after surgery, but you can continue to improve for up to one to two years. Number four is about making your home safer and easier for your reality post-surgery. Clearing out space so that it's easy to get around with a walking aid and removing small area rugs that might cause you to slip. Your balance may be off after surgery, so be extra careful not to rush and trip and fall. It is a good idea to have somebody around for the first few days as you get used to the new normal. Before surgery, you can purchase some helpful items for the first three months, including a long-handled shoehorn, a sock aid, a long-handled reacher. People with hip replacements may want a firm foam pillow for chairs and a raised toilet seat. All these things sound like a drag, but they'll actually increase your independence. Number five isn't a thing, it, it's an attitude. Henry Ford once said, when everything seems to be going against you, remember the airplane takes off against wind, not with it. I always thought that was true of having your hip or knee replaced, enduring some resistance so you can take off. It'll be a lot easier if you can balance optimism with realism, ask for help when you need it, and keep an eye on the big picture of improvement. Thanks and good luck.